Hey there guys, welcome to another FPV guide video. This year is turning out to be a killer year for video drones. It's literally raining great drones and today I have an other new very very good drone with me and I'm of course talking about the orange, ha huh, it's disappeared, there, the orange Autel X-Star Premium which has an amazing amount of features for about $899. So for that amount of money, you're looking at a very competent little aircraft. But let me walk you through why I think this is competent. And when you pick this up, first of all, the premium comes with an included carry case, which is a very nice little zipper lock suitcase. So that right there is part of making it the premium. The other important detail for the premium is that it has a 1.2 miles official range. Of course, as you know, I already cracked this box open, so I did release and cut this in the bottom. And so this would take off and go straight to the goods. Basically, this has a very heavy duty zipper and it's possible to put a small padlock on that zipper if you're traveling. But let's open that up. And as you can see, that goes all the way around. And opening this up, the main thing we see right away, of course, is the lovely orange X-Star Premium. Here it is. It's got long legs that protects the camera nicely. And I gotta tell you guys, the quality of the finish of this product is very, very unusual. I have seen a lot of drones the last couple of years and the quality of this one is just finished the casting the fit and finish is incredibly high compared to a lot of the ones we have seen and i'm sure you have seen cheap plastic and good plastic out there so first of all of course we have the drone itself and i'm going to move on to some of the features really quickly but first i'm going to take it out and i'm going to take the other things out of the box so we can see what we're doing other than the aircraft, let me pull out this, the first sink box here and see what's in that. In here we find a very nice little neck strap. I'll just open that up. It's not that easy. The plastic thingy. And here's your neck strap for the controller. Really quite nice and it has a nice little hook here. Quite confidence inspiring. I would definitely have no problem hanging my radio from this. The next thing I find is a USB to micro USB cable, which allows you to upgrade firmwares and connect an Android to your controller. We'll come back to that. Hey, look at this. Here's some extra foam bumpers. Put that over here. And this is really cool actually. This is the thing that holds the gimbal in case of a crash. So they actually have two extra in case you have crashes. But frankly, with the level of GPS technology today, we don't have as many crashes as we used to do. They also include a full set of four rubber spacers or dampers for the gimbal. And finally, this is a very cool little feature. Here is a motor lock. So if you're having a problem removing the propellers, you literally just put this over the motor. You can see how it opens up here. Push together and now you can really get a good grip and take off a propeller that has hit something maybe and really locked itself down carefully. So this is a really good little thing and it saves you having to use a pipe wrench on your motors, which I really don't recommend, but I have done that. That's it. And of course, here's the battery. This kit comes with a 4S 4900 milliamp battery. And that's rated to fly you for about 25 minutes. You know me, I'm gonna say that's probably more like 20 minutes, but I'm good with that because that's about where multi-rotors fly these days. In addition, on the back, you can see that the battery have a, there's a label here, let me get rid of that there. And so pushing on the battery, if I do like that, pushing it down, it will tell, now it's turned on. So you basically just hold the battery down for about three seconds and now the battery turns on. And from the lights here, you can see it's about halfway full. I'm gonna turn this back off, holding it down. 
and the battery is back off. If I grab the aircraft, since we are obviously going to be installing all of this real quickly, you can see this fits right into the back here. Just like that. So it's a really easy to work with system and we have seen that on most of the top drones the last couple of years, plug and play proprietary batteries. The top drones no longer has standalone batteries with the cable plug that plugs in. And I gotta say, I miss that, but at the same time, these batteries are easier to use and you are much less prone to have mistakes that causes crashes because of batteries being installed incorrectly or because of the battery not being charged adequately. On the way down into this case, the next thing I get to is this fabric tube here. It's like a little sleeve, quite nice little storage sleeve actually, but it's well closed. <laughs> they really close that up nicely. Let's pull this out of here. So it's a nice little sleeve and it's good to keep propellers organized. Let's put that over there. And here it is, oh, look at this, I like that. Here is one, two, three, four sets of propellers. So there's two propellers in each of these plastic tubes, I like that. Each set comes with a right and a left hand propeller or clockwise and counterclockwise. But more importantly, as you know, if you know anything about me, I think all products should ship with two sets of propellers simply because there's no greater agony than breaking a pair of propellers the first day and not be flying till you get more propellers. So I gotta tell you, Autel is checking the boxes for making me like this product. Four sets of propellers, excellent guys, well done. Continuing digging into this, I see over here the charging cable. We have seen those before. Let me see if I can get the charger out. Here is the charger, which is kind of an interesting design. And let me tell you right away, when I first was looking at these, they actually confused me. You basically to charge this, we've got to take the top here and crack it open. Kind of a little bit like a Sippo lighter. And then you take your battery. And you can see up on the battery here, it has the spots here and this thing literally slides in. There you go. And then you plug this end into a regular, I have a million of these typical standard laptop cables. So any cable you have that fits into that and you are in business. And don't forget the other cable sticking out right here. You're gonna laugh, but it literally took me forever. I kept trying to plug the radio into the USB cable to charge it and it wouldn't take a charge until I actually read the manual. And I found out, bloody hell, you have to use this cable here from the charger to charge the radio. So reading the manual, as much as I'm against it, it's a great idea and you should try it. I should try it too, right? So this comes off. This is the charger. We put that over here with all the other goodies. And well, let's grab the radio here. This is pretty much the radio. And as you can see, it can accommodate. I happen to have an iPhone handy. I can put it on right here. And there is an iPhone mounted. So so in order to connect this phone to the radio, unfortunately it doesn't use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or something like we kind of gotten used to. It actually used a heart connection. Before I put that down, I gotta tell you, I like a heart connection because I feel I'm less likely to have a connection error. So I'm okay with that, but unfortunately I had to go and find one of my big Apple cables. I didn't really like the idea of a long cable hanging down and being all over the place. So I digged into my Inspire case and I, a while ago bought a couple of little cables like this. They're basically micro USB cables. And so the way that works is we plug it in up here in the corner and then we turn it over and we plug it into the USB plug in the bottom of the controller. When you start the app on the phone, it's automatically gonna launch when you turn on the radio. So that's actually quite nice because you're not looking to try to figure out where is the app when you get ready to fly. For the record, I would normally be flying with my iPad, mostly because I do not like flying with a phone unless it's in airplane mode, simply because I don't like it to turn on when I least expect it. So let's take this, we can turn it around. I'm not sure if the little one fits or not. Plug it in here. 
and it barely fits. So there we go, we're basically hooked up. Click on Starlink, here it comes, and there we go. So now we're basically ready. We obviously need to turn the aircraft on also, but this is nice, it has nice little grips down the bottom. And while I'm looking up at the top here, here is playback button, here is the camera button right down here, and on the other side, see the red button right there, that is start recording, and here is your camera angle, and here is the switch for the flight modes right there. The flight mode switch here is really the first switch you're going to be using. That has IOC, which is Intelligent Orientation Control, then has GPS, which basically means you're flying a regular orientation, but with GPS support. And finally, if you push it all the way over, it's manual ATTI, which will allow you to fly faster. So pulling this back here, let's pull the rest of the stuff out of this case. Let's just go ahead and finish the case here. And here is, I'm just gonna use a propeller to open this. There. So li literally, I have not actually read the manual yet, except for a couple of excerpts online. L let's see what we get out of the box. And here, the first thing, of course, all the drones this year are shipping with, know before you fly. This is information where it is safe and legal to fly. You do need to check on this kind of information and I recommend going to knowbeforeyoufly.org, O-R-G, before you start flying. It is important because there are places around the world today that is simply not legal to fly. And there is events and situations that is not a good idea to turn on an aircraft. So check out knowbeforeyoufly.org. The next thing right here is the content of the case. So this is everything we got. I'm just, we already know what we got. We're gonna put that away. And this looks like a quick start guide. So this is everything you need to get going really quickly. And in other words, it's the thin manual. Below it, in case you need to know more than what you learned from the thin manual, is the thick manual. It's not really too bad, it's maybe like quarter inch. So you can make it through it in half an hour or so. You should read this before you start flying because after all, you're putting almost a thousand dollars up in the air and not knowing the basics of how to safely operate that aircraft could cause you to lose a very expensive aircraft. Empty. Alrighty guys, there is one cart left in the box. And this is the all the registration information card. And when I turn it over, we have the three ways you can get support. I'm gonna put that up on the screen right here. It's easy to get information from Autel. Most importantly, what I really look at here is it's a seven days a week. So let's give that a quick test. I have never done this before, but hang in there with me. I brought my phone and I'm, how do I do this? I'm gonna put this down right here so I can see it. And I'm just gonna turn this on and go into my phone. And I'm gonna go ahead and dial. So the number we have here is going to be 844-692-8835. And pressing call. Be patient, guys. I'm putting on a speaker. Thank you for calling Autel Robotics. Our customer service experts are happy to help you out. We heard For that before. Support, press one. For dealer support, I'm pressing press one. And waiting. I recognize that music. Thank you for calling Autel Robotics. This is Tom. How can I help you? Hi there, Tom. This is Bo Lorenzen. I'm the FPV guy, and I'm sitting here making a video about the X Star Premium. Is it possible you could answer a couple of questions for me? Yeah, Bo, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Just in case we get disconnected, is a good callback number 562. Yes, that is correct. Excellent. And what questions can I help you with today, Bo? I don't know, guys. I wish you could chime in right here. Um, I know a lot of people right now are doing firmware upgrades. Talk to me. necessary on our first batch of uh, X-Star Premiums and X-Star. And there is a firmware 
file and instructions on our support site, uh, autelrobotics.com. Um, follow the links to support and you'll find some good instructions for downloading and uh, installing the firmware. A uh, couple of things uh, to keep in mind when you're doing the firmware upgrade. Uh, it can be kind of a sensitive process. Uh, the first time that you transfer the uh, bin file from your computer to the SD card and then the SD card is put into your drone uh, in order to start the firmware update process. Uh, that process can take 20 to 30 minutes and there'll be a lot of messages about it, you know, retrying, uh, succeeding. Uh, and the main thing you want to look for is if anything fails. Uh, if one of the components fails, then you're gonna to wanna to reflash the firmware uh, and our instructions help you with that on our support site. Essentially, you're gonna take the SD card out of the drone, put it back in your PC, uh, you'll rename the file and remove a dash old from the file name so that it only ends with .bin and then put that SD card back in the aircraft. Um, the reason I mention that is we get a few calls from customers where it fails uh, and then they struggle to, you know, know what to do next. So that's the um, uh, step for reflashing the firmware. And sometimes we've seen it take four or five tries to uh, successfully update. Companies. Okay, so let me ask you, so I've heard of people doing two or three tries here. So if it fails a couple of times, it basically means hit it again. Exactly right, exactly right. It, it might fail, you know, it might go through perfectly the first time. Uh, it might fail two or three or four times, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, and reflashing that firmware, uh, you know, each time by renaming the file, uh, the bin file, the update file that you downloaded from the website, uh, is necessary to reactivate the aircraft's firmware update. Um, what Let me interrupt you check. here. So, so basically you need to rename the file and get going again. I, I wanna get back to my video. I have one more question for you. Talk to me about autopilot features. What kind of features do we get in the XStar Premium? Yeah, absolutely. The Starlink app uh, has three, uh, well, I should say four autopilot features. Uh, intelligent orientation control is a flight mode slash autopilot feature. Uh, so that's kind of the fourth mode. The other three are your standard uh, autopilot features of waypoint missions, follow me mode, and orbit mode. Uh, all three of those are accessible through the Starlink app, uh, and they're very intuitive for setting them up uh, while you have the aircraft in flight. You just tap the fly button, and there the orbit follow and waypoint missions can be accessed there and set up through the Starlink app. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you answering my question. I'm really surprised how quickly you picked up. And let me ask you, it says here on the card I have in the box seven days a week. Are you guys really open seven days a week? Yep, our US-based support is uh, located in our Bothell, Washington. Uh, we are open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Available phone, email, chat, or social media. Uh, and we'll be here to help you know all of our customers with whichever questions they might have. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And thank you for picking up the call. I'm, I'm surprised how easy this was. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome, Bo. Give us a call anytime you have any questions. Otherwise, have a great day and fly safe. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Wow, guys, that was really, really easy. I expected to be on hold a lot longer, and I also expected it would be harder to get information. This was easy, and Tom actually was able to answer some of these questions. I do wonder what his last name was. I probably should have asked about that. He also did half of my job by telling you what this aircraft can do. But let's move on, and let's take a look at all the components so that you can get more information about the aircraft. So moving right into some of the additional features, let's take a look at the camera. There's a couple of things we see right away here. And if I move back here, can you see that? Right here. This is the ultrasonic altitude control. And what that does is it sends a pling out like a radar and hits the ground and comes back up. And that helps the aircraft keep an exact height over the ground. 
The other thing you see here is the camera. So that's an optical drift camera. And when you're flying, that's gonna see something on the ground and it's gonna lock itself onto that thing on the ground. So that helps you get a very stable experience in close ground control. A really fun little trick you can do with that is if you throw like a white target on the ground with a string and you pull the target real closely, you're gonna see the aircraft following the target because the camera sees the white dot and holds onto that. Moving over to the camera, I have been flying a bit with this already and the one takeaway I have is that the camera is incredibly sharp. It has very good contrast and it's obviously multi-coated on the lens. And the way you can see that, I'm popping a picture up for you right here, the sun is beaming right into the lens and you can see the glare, the orange thing around the sun. And you can see that there's still details in the shadow. And that's because there's a multi-coating going on here that avoids the light getting scattered inside the lens. So we have a really good camera experience here, which is something that's really important because in today's world, drones, or, and it's particularly video drones, are really becoming flying cameras. So what the camera can do really matters for what the drone is worth to you. So. It has a little thing and you have to kind of get used to the little gimbal lock plastic thingy. I'm gonna pull it out, it kind of comes out this way here. So here it is, that is the gimbal lock and it goes right in from the right side of the gimbal behind the camera and in like that. If you can see that right here, I don't know, that's pretty much it, you just kind of tuck it in just like that. Let's get rid of that for now. We have a three axis gimbal right here. And if you turn it around here on the other side, you can see right down here on, that would be the left side of the gimbal base is where the memory card goes. If I push that in with my fingernail and then pull it out, what I get here is a SanDisk Ultra 64 gigabyte memory card. So that's actually unusual to see an actual brand name micro SD card in a drone kit. So I like that and 64 gigabyte is gonna keep me shooting for most of the day. And let me pop this back in there. The camera here is actually a 4K camera. It of course says 4K right up here and you can do 4K in 25, 30 frames per second. You can do 2.7K 1080p and 720p. Interestingly enough, at 720p, it offers 240 frames per second, which is of course lending itself to some serious slow motion. Imagine some motorbikes jumping, water skiers, and other things that we may wanna see in slow motion. Let's move on and put some propellers on. Up here on top of the arm sits a little thing that shows you what way these propellers go. So basically the propeller swings around and as usually it swims in. So the two front propellers turns in like this. And let's grab the propeller. So we need two bags of propellers and remember we got a total of four in the kit. Pulling these out here and here's another pair. On top of the motors here, let's take this off. This says warning, and you of course are supposed to keep your fingers out of the propellers. On this side here, we put one of these and we always turn them in like a screw until they go down. And then on, you can see on the other side here, there's a little red dot on the center of the motor. So we're gonna use the propeller with the red dot. So red to red, and that just kind of comes down here and we turn it on counterclockwise. So that's what we do all the way around. We put a propeller on each end. And finally the last one here, putting it down here and kind of turning it counterclockwise till it comes down. Then to make sure it's secure, so you're just gonna kind of grab it really hard and tug it down there. Now they have all been tucked down really well the stock propellers are really nice. They're about $20 for a complete set. And these are really nice props. I was very surprised, and if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know I normally 
always say stick to the stock propellers that are made for the aircraft and they're probably the best props you're gonna get and they're also less hazardous to your fingers. These ones may be less hazardous to your fingers, but the last week I've been flying with four of these that Frank at carolinadrones.com was kind enough to send me. And these are Aeronaut Cam Carbon Light Propellers. I'll put a link in the post on my blog at fpvguy.com. And I was actually very surprised that I found the aircraft was more stable or maybe more solid in the air with the aeronaut propellers. I can't really tell you why, because it doesn't make sense. Other people on the internet are saying it's because they're stiffer and that may be, but I can tell you there's absolutely no doubt the aircraft feels tighter in the air when flying with the aeronaut props. So for once, I'm gonna move away from my regular recommendation of just using the plastic props that comes with it and suggest that you may wanna get some of the aeronaut props. It's not a big deal. Unless you fly a lot, you would probably not notice the difference. But if you are already an experienced pilot, you may actually appreciate the difference. While we're talking about aftermarket accessories, there's one accessory I always swear by, and that is graduated ND filters. And Frank are getting made up graduated ND filters for the Outel premium camera. So check out his website for graduated NDs. What they do is when you go up and you have this beautiful cloudscape and the ground gets kind of dark because of the white in the clouds, you stick a graduated ND on and it's gonna darken the sky while you're gonna be able to see details in the ground. Really quickly, I'm gonna remove the props for safety. There. The props has been removed for safety and now I can turn the aircraft on. I'm pushing in and it turned on. And as usual, <laughs> and as usual, do as I say, not as I do, because I forgot to turn on the controller. Now the controller is turned on, but thankfully, I did not have propellers on. You never want to have an aircraft with propellers next to your face. There we go. Now it says, up here on the screen, it says connected and it says start. I'm just gonna go ahead and press start. And we come in here and we get an information screen. Radio signal strength is 100%. SD card is 59 gigabytes, whole bunch of numbers. Flight indicator lights are normal, overall status normal, compass normal, and gimbal status is normal. So I'm gonna click on the X up here. And here you have it, down in the bottom left corner, right here, we actually can see, and if we had an internet connection at the moment, it would supposedly pull in a map here. I'm not quite sure how that works. So I'm gonna have to look into that further and add that to my block. This is not so easy to see. But down in the bottom, you can see it says settings. There's like a little gear here. So if I pull that up, we get a whole bunch of settings. And the first, the first important one is the flight control settings, compass calibration. We can go through this to calibrate. This is right now in beginner mode. Beginner mode is gonna limit the height you can go to and how far you can go out. You can turn that off right here, done deal. I don't wanna get limited how far or fast I can fly. Now, then it has a question here, horizontal speed. And the max speed here is 33 miles per hour. If you wanna calm this down a little bit, you can select 22 or 11 miles per hour. So it calms it down. Moving down in the menu here, the next thing we see is altitude limit. That's right now set to 394 feet, which is of course, as we all know, the legal max altitude for a drone in the US is 400 feet. But if I click on this, you will see that this actually has options from 98 feet. And if I scroll this to the right, it goes up to 2,624 feet. I'm just gonna leave it at that and press okay. Altitude limit, you are altering the maximum flight altitude, blah, blah, blah. Maximum altitude set by the FAA. You are solely responsible. I'm just gonna press okay. 
So by pressing OK here, I've been informed and now I can fly up to almost 3000 feet in the air. Down in the bottom here, it says distance limit and I can turn that on and off how far I want that distance limit to be. I usually like that because if it gets away from me, I don't want it to keep going. Here's another really important setting and I like that they have that. Let me try to turn that so you can see that. It is go home altitude. This is right now set to 98 feet, which is 30 meters in the air. And again, I can click on that and I can turn that up and say, make it 200 feet which is 60 meters in the air. So that's probably more than I want. Let's take it back down to 130 feet right here. But I like that I'm able to select my own return to home altitude. Let's try to click on advanced settings. By default, the system does not allow you to fly ATTI, which is basically fully manual. So you have to go into advanced settings and here I can turn it on and now I have to say, okay, I understand. And that turns on the advanced settings and the ATTI mode, meaning because I like to fly fully manual. And of course on a video drone, that may not matter so much since this doesn't have an immediate video out to fly goggles for FPV. Let's move on in features up here. Here is settings for the radio moving right along. Here is I can choose which video link channel I use. So sometimes they may give you a better connection when you're flying. So here is now the battery setting and it's really nice to be able to set this up. On the left here you see it has the low battery warning and this is a time when you should definitely return to home yourself. Critical warning, battery warning right here and this is where it's going to auto land. That is when there's 10% left in the battery. You can also kind of see the status of the battery and you can see that it has been charged two times. So this battery has been flown twice. And other feature that is really cool about these batteries is they are in fact smart batteries. And after a number of days, they will start discharging themselves so that they don't get damaged if you have charged them and have not used them. And down here in the bottom of the corner, it says time to discharge. That is right now set to six days. And I could turn that and say, well, I want it to be four days. So I can choose an other number of days just by clicking on it. Now it says three days. And basically that sets up how quickly I want the battery to start discharging to its storage voltage. It's an important setting. That's an important feature because it's going to save you batteries because if you charge your batteries to go flying and then you got busy and didn't flew, the batteries are going to start getting really thick and they're not as good as they used to be. Now moving right along, clicking on the gimbal, we can choose the gimbal mode to be FPV or stabilized. And we can also here, we can calibrate the gimbal. We don't need to calibrate it right now, but it's a feature that's right here. Moving on from the gimbal, the last thing here shows that we can choose the different metric or imperial flight routes, maps. And down here is a really cool little feature right here. You can do YouTube live streaming directly from your iPad. So if you have a good strong Wi-Fi signal or a strong LTE signal, you can actually do live streaming to YouTube from this camera, which is really a cool feature. Up on the side here, you have the cameras. You can choose between video camera, still camera, click down here for the settings. And importantly, you can click on auto or manual. And if you click manual, then you can adjust all the settings right here. I'm going to put it back to automatic. And down here we have the camera details. So clicking on those, I can choose single for my stills. Here's all the information, including the size, 4,000 by 3,000 pixels for my still images. Clicking on the camera, I get right now I'm shooting 4K, 30 frames per second, but I could change that to 24 frames per second. And moving down here, we have 2.7, 1080p and 720p. The final menu right here is the little gear wheel. If I click on that, we get the option to have a histogram, overexposure warning, 
subtitle, whatever that is, anti-flicker, whatever that is, and a grid for helping with composition. So we have a lot of features right here that is very serious camera geek features. So if you are a prosumer camera guy, this may very well be the drone for you. Moving on from all the settings, if you look over here, you can see here is a hold to start motors. Here is hold to take off and hold to land. And I gotta tell you, I've been using this two ways you can do this because you can push this button until the motor starts or you can take the sticks and do like this. And with that, it is all running. Now to take off, I could push this out or take off or you can just push the stick up. That's not gonna last very long. So I'm just holding the stick down and now it realized it's landed and to kill it again, just sticks down and center and we have killed it again. But let me remove the iPad real quickly. I'm just gonna unplug it and take it off. We can turn that off for now because there's another cool little feature. If you look right here on top of the radio, you'll see that it has all the information or at least, or at least it has all the flight critical information. So you can see up on top of the controller right here, the direction it's pointing. You can see the number of GPSs and you can see signal strength for both video, the controller, and you can see remaining battery. What that means is if you're packing light and just want to take it up and get some sunset without bringing a big iPad with you, you could actually very easily remove this bracket and you can fly without putting an iPad on here and still have all the critical information right here in front of you. I really do like that because some of the new drones does not have that and simply require you to have a smartphone handy every time you fly. That's a nifty little feature, but I still would recommend having a smartphone, an Android tablet or an iPad. And while we talk about tablets and iPads, I was going, you know, that really isn't a way for me to fly FPV. And I've got to tell you, anything that has a delay like these kind of systems do are not really FPV systems, but if you were to want to fly FPV, an NVIDIA Shield tablet that is not terribly expensive actually have an HDMI out port, which would allow you to plug HDMI capable goggles directly into it and see the full screen. So you can actually get a video out, but you do need the NVIDIA Shield tablet, which is an Android tablet to do that. One of the really cool, one of the very interesting thing about Autel as a new company is their interest in cameras. And if you look at the side of this gimbal right here, you see this big push pin. If I push this in, I can actually pull the gimbal right off. And there you have it. This camera can be swapped out by the push of a pin. And then there's a whole bunch of little contacts looks like little fancy little gold plated contacts in here. And on the bottom of the aircraft, you can of course see also the same contacts right here. Down here, we see the down camera and the ultrasonic altitude control. The 4K camera from Autel apparently is not only one of the best cameras on the market at the moment, but I happen to know from NAB 2016, when we had a chance to sit down and talk to some of the top people at Autel Technologies, they were telling me they're incredibly interested in cameras and have more cameras planned. What that means is, let's hope they continue using the same platform mount here because this is how easy you mount a new camera onto this system. You literally just stick it on here push it down, it's a pretty solid push. And there you have it. Obviously at the moment, there is no additional cameras that has been announced, but I do find it very interesting that they have this click on, click off option for a advanced camera platform. 
So basically to understand the value proposition for this camera, for $899, we are getting a very good camera, probably one of the better ones on the market. And we're getting a very well flying drone with sonar altitude control and a down looking camera to lock it in place if there's no GPS signal. And we're getting a quite good gimbal and of course we're getting a modern controller with a built-in information screen and the possibility to fly using a tablet so you can customize all your settings. That's not bad for $899. And more importantly, we get tech support that is available seven days in a week with, in our case, less than one minute of wait time. I was very impressed with how quickly tech support picked up. Frankly, I would not hold my breath as more and more people buy this thing. There is gonna be more calls to tech support for obvious reasons. However, I do know that our tell is working very, very hard on putting on a ton of people for the support staff. And I like that it's not outsourced. They're English speakers right here in the US. And do visit carolinadrones.com. Frank right now has these things in stock for same day shipping. And as you know, I'm a big fan of carolinadrones.com, mostly because they have probably the best customer service I've ever encountered. But don't take my word for it, check them out on your own. Of course, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos and more flight videos with this aircraft. And also check me out on Instagram slash FPV guy.